Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, I'm going to address a question that is often asked by you guys, the viewers. Which CPU should I buy for gaming, Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7? Around this time last year, we set out to address that very question with the first generation of Ryzen CPUs by comparing the Ryzen 7 1700, Ryzen 5 1600, and we even threw in the quad-core Ryzen 5 1400 for good measure. The 1700 is, of course, an 8-core 16-thread CPU, while the 1600 is a 6-core 12-thread CPU, and the 1400 a 4-core 8-thread CPU. For that test, we benchmarked half a dozen modern titles and found that overall there was very little difference in performance between the 6 and 8 core models. Virtually no difference at all for most titles, in fact. Games such as Total War Warhammer 2 using the GTX 1080 Ti with the ultra quality settings saw no real difference at 1080p. And the same was also true for Hitman, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and even Battlefield 1. In fact, even the margins and ashes of the singularity were very minimal. Ultimately, what this meant was the Ryzen 5 1600 ended up being a much more cost-effective option, and once overclocked, it cost gamers just $3 per frame in our tests, while the 1700 was almost 40% more expensive per frame. Now, we have the newer second generation Ryzen models featuring the 6 core 2600 series and the 8 core 2700 series. The 6 core models cost around 30% less, so once again, many are asking us if they should even bother with the 2700 or 2700X for gaming. Rather than compare the 6 and 8 core processors and a shipload of games, we're going to just get straight to the point on this one. As was the case a year ago, there really are still no games that take full advantage of an 8 core processor, and in fact, Ashes of the Singularity is still one of the best examples we have. Even so, using the highest quality settings, which still allow the GTX 1080 Ti to render well over 60 FPS at 1440p, we see absolutely no difference in performance, and this is also true even at 1080p. Removing the GPU bottleneck at 720p reveals the 8-core model to be a superior performer, but even in this title, a title that I'd say is very core-heavy by today's standards, under almost all real-world conditions, that difference won't be realised. Still, if more games were like Ashes of the Singularity, then picking between these two CPUs for gaming would be a little more difficult. However, as it currently stands, most games look like this, and what we see here when testing with Deus Ex Mankind Divided is... Nothing. No difference at all between these two CPUs, even at 720p. This can also be seen when testing with Project Cars 2 and a number of other mostly GPU-bound games. Some games will slightly favour the higher core count processor when not GPU limited, such as Just Cause 3, Prey, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and Ghost Recon Wildlands, but the margins are very small and again, under most conditions, won't be realised. Recently, we also conducted some core scaling benchmarks when comparing the 2700X and 8700K. Here are the second generation Ryzen results, and as you can quite clearly see playing Battlefield 1 with the GTX 1080 Ti at 1080p using the ultra quality settings, this sees very little difference between the 6 and 8 core Ryzen CPUs. That said, we do see a reasonably large drop off with just 4 cores active. Depending on the conditions, it is possible to achieve slightly better performance with the 8 core model in games such as Battlefield 1, but we're still only talking a 5% difference when using medium quality settings. That being the case, it's quite clear nothing has changed in the past year. AMD 6 core 12 thread Ryzen 5 processors are still the sweet spot for gamers, offering the perfect balance of price and performance. You really only need to look at the Ryzen 7 series if you plan on running core heavy applications, doing things such as encoding and rendering, for example. Purely for gaming, the Ryzen 7 processors are still overkill, and while it is nice to have that extra headroom, truth be told, you'll likely upgrade to a newer, more efficient CPU before taking advantage of the headroom offered by those extra cores. So, if you're a gamer trying to work out whether or not to spend that extra $100 on a Ryzen 7 processor, I recommend you don't. Instead, invest that money in some quality DDR4 memory or a faster graphics card. And that is going to do it for this one. That can't be it. Where are the rest of the benchmarks? What? They don't all have to be benchmark marathons. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.